Here we go. Oh boy. Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we have ourselves a mod that nobody asked for and that is the PKSP. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, but why? Why not? So what exactly do we have here? How did I go about building it? And will I be testing it on myself? And the answer to that is yes. First off, it's all built into a PSP 1000 model because of all the extra space that we have on the back. And we're housing it within aftermarket yellow shell from AliExpress for two reasons. One of them is because it fits the theme, since we have a Pikachu, and at the same time, it's because it's one of the last two good shells available on AliExpress, which is this yellow one and the cyan one. Those are the only good two shells that I can recommend as of right now. Then we have an aftermarket black ring, which is very easily chipped. We have an original memory card cover, as well as a battery door push button. As for the trim, it has been spray painted with charcoal black and finished off with a matte clear coat. I think it looks awesome. And yes, it does have some blemishes. And that's because I didn't wait long enough for it to dry before I started installing it. Alongside with all the original black buttons, I think it looks absolutely stunning. It's extra special and one of a kind because the 1000 model trims only come in two different colors. Unlike the slim models, which come in various different colors, the 1000 model primarily comes in the silver and only two models have the dark gray finish. That being the Metal Gear Solid Edition and the silver one. And as we'll see, although it has been a painful process going through this entire build, the end result definitely speak for themselves. Yes, it's kind of rough around the edges, but it is what it is. So with the shell out of the way, I went ahead and installed a matte finish IPS screen, which is one of the best screens you can get for your PSP. I went ahead and did my first vertical Type-C port on a 1000 model using my ultra cheap $78 printer. And because that printer is so cheap, the results were suboptimal. But in the end, it did work out. Finally, of course, we have the taser prongs, which are on the right side. And no, they are definitely not annoying. That's one reason why I went with these screws. They're nice and small, they have beveled edges, and I think they would fit pretty discreetly. Which of course you can go ahead and fully unscrew, which would leave you with a result like this. Or you could unscrew them halfway through for more of a protruding effect. On the bottom trim we have an ergonomic switch to activate the, uh, the Pika function. And to prevent accidental termination, we've got a safety switch right over here. Which when we go ahead and take a look at the battery compartment, we'll find the taser module as well as the battery BMS. And if you're new to PSBs, you're probably like, where's the battery? Well, we have opted for a custom battery that replaces the UMD drive. We've got a 2500 milliamp hour battery. It's nice and small, pretty compact, and has plenty of juice for my use case. And if you want, you can always go ahead and upgrade it to something even juicier. So with that said, here's a quick look at what it looks like when activated. Yes, it's pretty scary, it's pretty loud, and every time I activate it, my ears start ringing, and the air around me starts smelling like ozone, which smells kind of nice, but not very safe. And yes, you can in fact activate it while the PSP is running. So with that being said, before we go ahead and test it on myself, trying it on a light bulb, and trying to see if it has any effect on the ad hoc Wi-Fi function between two PSPs, let's quickly go over my entire journey on how I got this put together. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So we kicked things off by trying out all the different models that I had on hand. Now these of course are not the only units out there, but the most common one that you'll see is this one right here. I've had it in the past, and I have it now. It's like a couple dollars, which is plenty of fun to look at, but probably not very fun to touch. But we'll see about that. The ones that are encased in resin like this are usually rated for 3 volts to 6 volts. While this one right here was rated for 6 to 12 volts, if I remember correctly. And with that, we went ahead and tested out the largest unit that we had on hand, and probably the largest one that you can find on AliExpress. I overloaded it. Which, although those look pretty impressive, we don't actually know what's inside unless we take them apart and do some measurements, which I'm not qualified for. But one thing for sure is, is that although it's larger, it's pretty empty on the inside. It's about the same size as the standard one here. Nonetheless, it did have some pretty big arcs, looks pretty cool, and it's still pretty cheap. Then we ran the standard one. You know, still pretty good. Not as powerful, but pretty good. Then we tried the fat little one. And once again, it's pretty impressive, but at a slightly lower level. And finally, the impressively sized one that we'll be using for this mod. And yeah, what can I say? It fits, it makes loud noises, and it looks pretty cool. So that's what we ended up using. So anyways, after I was done playing around with the different units, it was time to do some basic testing. And that is to see if my custom battery can handle both the PSP 
and the arcs running at the exact same time. Let me toss that battery right in there, put that aside. Here goes the memory card, plug in our battery, and we can go ahead and power it on. Perfect. I should have added a power switch. Let me go ahead and do that. That should be good enough. All right, so uh, here goes nothing. Maybe we'll start right here. All right, here we go. It works. And guess what? It ran just fine. We ran it on the XMB. We ran it with battery steep, which is a heavy load. Oh, that's me. And finally, we had it running with more Storm Arctic Edge. Which surprisingly turned out to be perfectly fine for the most part, but more on that later. All right, so I guess it works. Now let's go ahead and find out if we can fit it all in. Oh yeah, we can't forget about this one. So let's put it together and see how it turns out. So according to the listing, it should look a little something like this. Here goes nothing. Nothing. Oh, it says six to 15 volts, okay. Oh crap. All right, enough of this. I need to vent out my room. Okay, so this one is really cool. Kind of sounds like a microwave that's on fire, really. You know what, let me turn off the lights. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna clean my table up and I guess I'll just start working on the OG here. And by the way, throughout this entire video, I was powering everything using the DPS 150 from Fnercy. No, it's not sponsored. They sent it out for review to help with these projects and I happen to really like it. I mean, it looks awesome. It's the perfect size for my type of projects. And the best part in my opinion is that you can actually power it through either DC or with a PD type C charger, which is absolutely fantastic. And it handles things very well. It still works and it's been stress tested through this entire video. And if you see any clips where it turns off, that's actually not this thing, but it's the cheap Timo power supply that I'm using to power this thing. But yeah, you'll definitely be seeing it more in the future videos. So if you're interested, there'll be links for it in the description down below, along with some possible coupons. Now, although I was gonna go ahead and use my slim model, as it would be more impressive size-wise, I ended up going with the fat model, as I do want everything to fit as comfortably as possible. And initially, I was worried about ruining the shell, as it is one of the last good shells you can find in the aftermarket space, which if you're not up to date on what's good, these are the only two good 1000 shells that are left on the market. And the way you can know is with the color, but most importantly, if it uses a single power switch. If it's split into two pieces, save yourself the hassle and stay away from it. And at this point, it was finally time for some good old chopping, hacking, snipping, and trimming. And we did a whole lot of that in this area right here. Once that's done, I started visualizing how I want to put things together and decided that I'll be using screws with their brass inserts as the output leads. But the trickiest part that I struggled with was actually getting proper placements on the trim piece in a way that I like, that fits well, functions well with the right distance, and is perfectly centered. And uh, initially it was all right, I was gonna let it pass, but long story short, it went through a bunch of different revisions. And I'll show you a before and after in just a bit. The first set of tests were insulated with some mounting putty which at first worked all right, but I quickly found out that it's probably a pretty bad idea. And I did find that sometimes the arcs would actually blow right through it and bridge the gap between the two contacts, which was the point where I destroyed my first unit. You see, these things are pretty weak. They're very cheaply made. And to insulate everything, they encase the components in this little shell and dump some kind of resin that ends up looking like this. So with that in mind, in combination with the tests that I've done before recording and the various different tests that I've done up until this point, I ended up cooking one of these. It would eventually start fizzling out. It would give you a very tiny arc, very silent, and eventually it just stops working outright. And guess who didn't order multiple units like they always do? That would be me. I ended up placing an order for four more and waited another two or three weeks for those parts to arrive. All right, and we are back and we have ordered four different replacement parts just in case if we screw up again and again and again and again. So let's get back to where we were. So I took it all apart, super glued the old trim holes as they were a bit too big, sanded them down and redrilled the holes for a couple times too many. It was a whole lot of back and forth, but long story short, at that point it didn't matter how it looked as I was planning on spray painting the trim from the start. And this time around when it came to insulating the contacts, I used some liquefied hot glue with a lighter and casted it like it was molten aluminum which actually resulted in a very good barrier for now. As for the actual module, trying to fit it as is proved to be a challenge, in which I whipped out my janky rotary sanding station, which yes, is a repurposed hard drive. I first had to remember how to jumpstart it and get things going. 
and after a little bit of servicing, it was back up and running. And guess what? I actually didn't need it, and somehow throughout this process, ended up destroying my second unit. So we are now down to three working units. So for the next one, I realized that I can manually just break apart everything by chipping away at the shell bit by bit. I once again cut the wires to size, fit them through, soldered the brass inserts, and since the battery door release button was getting stuck because of all the hot glue on the other side, this time around I used some Kapton tape as a barrier, and it turned out to work pretty all right. And moved on to the next key component, that being the activation button. And how I decided where I want to place it is based on ergonomics. I basically just grabbed it like so and marked where my thumb naturally sits, which happens to be right over here, which seemed to be perfect. Now as a side note, although functionally it looks pretty great, it may not work great for the thumbnail. So if I end up using a thumbnail where the prongs are actually on this side, you know why. So as I was saying, after marking my point, what I end up using is a large grill, which is a bad idea, I should have tapped it, but once again I ended up with a suboptimal cutout, at which I contemplated my life choices for a couple minutes and decided to just let it go. And I thought to myself, once it's all painted black, it should be fine for the most part, as I really don't want to ruin another trim piece. And I was right, once it was painted, the end result speaks for itself. It's not too bad. And at this point, once all the cutouts were done on the trim pieces, it was time to start sanding things down to prepare them for painting. And although I don't have any footage of the actual process, we will have a video about it sometime in the future, once I've done enough experimentation. But essentially, we used Rust-Oleum Canyon Black and finished it off with some matte clear coat. And that's how we got ourselves this very nice finish. Now, if there is one tip that I can give you, that would be to do light coats and to let everything dry properly, especially after the final coat. Because I rushed things, I wanted to get this video out, but here we are a couple months later. We got some areas where the paint was damaged, which I ended up touching it up with a pen, as I didn't let it dry for 24 hours, and that's what happens when you rush things. But it is what it is. Now you'll notice that I left out the levers here, and the main reason for that is for fitment. I'm still doing some testing, seeing what's the best way to actually spray paint these PSP parts, and I think it's still possible to actually paint them and still have a durable finish. But once again, I still need to do some more testing before I can go over the entire process in the spray painting video. As I do think, at this point, spray painting an original shell is the best shell that you can get your hands on. Then we moved on to installing a safety power switch that was placed in the battery compartment. I wired it all together and of course hot glued it into place. Then I did some more fitment tests, readjusted the BMS contacts so they have an easier time reaching the ones on the motherboard. Then I finished wiring everything, testing it out, and closed everything back up. Then I found myself dealing with the good old classic stick drift issues, which of course is a typical problem with the shell swaps, sometimes even on original ones. But I just went ahead and used my go-to method by soldering wires directly between the motherboard and the analog stick. So anyways, moving on, we closed everything back together, which at that point I thought it was finally done. And to celebrate, I played around with it off camera long enough to guess what? <coughs> Cook it. So yes, at this point, we have destroyed three of these units throughout this entire build. So yeah, had to go ahead and completely rip it apart, remove the hot glue, desolder everything, redo the wires, redo the shell, re-glue everything, and securing the actual module with some double-sided tape, which seemed to work a whole lot better than what I was using before, which was hot glue. This time around, I tried rounding things slightly differently, and after I destroyed my last trim piece, as I went back in it and used paint thinner, re-drilled it, repainted it, well, guess what? It was completely ruined. It's an absolute mess, and this is the point where I went ahead and used another trim piece and redid the cutouts and spray paint from scratch. Which at this point, I was like, hmm, maybe I should add Type-C. And I was like, let me try out my cheap 3D printer that I bought and reviewed in my last video, and see how it turns out. Long story short, after a bunch of work off camera, melting, molding, trimming, sanding, and painting, I finally managed to make it fit, but not without any errors. But at that point, I just wanted everything to be functional and put back together so I can test it on myself. You may look at it and be like, hey, it doesn't look too bad, but I see every little flaw about it, especially the part where I kind of damaged the shell here. So after installing the Type-C port, everything was finally put back together for what hopefully is the last time. Which leads us to this point, the moment that you and I have been waiting for. So let's get on with it. So here are the couple of the ideas. We'll try and see if we can light up these fluorescent lights. We'll play some local multiplayer games over ad hoc and see if we can interfere the signal. We'll see if we can light up some stuff. And then last but not least, I'll test it on myself. And the only thing I'm worried about here is that the taser ends up dying before we try out and record everything. So let's get started by slightly extending these contacts. Although it does work perfectly fine when it's closed, having them stick out ever so slightly will make things a whole lot easier to control. Let's hop on the back and flip the safety switch to off. And we are now live. And I may need to change my camera settings, so I'm going to go ahead and drop down to 150th. Still doesn't work. We'll try 140. I think that should work. So, here we go. The battery is fully charged, as you can see here. And we can start with something I would say is pretty boring. And then to see if we can light up this fluorescent light. So, here goes nothing.
Nope, nothing at all. Oh, it almost worked. Oh. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's try that again. So that was kind of successful. Let's move on to the next one, which is, uh, I guess, setting stuff on fire. Let's see if this works. A whole lot of nothing, eh? How about a piece of tissue? It is actually just getting vaporized. Yeah. All right. How about we try spraying a little bit of isopropyl alcohol? Let it vaporize. All right, so for this next test, we're doing Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories Local Multiplayer. We got two units right here connected via ad hoc, and the original plan was to actually include this one as well. However, for whatever reason, I don't want to connect to ad hoc no more. Could be related to what we've done to it, could be not, who knows. And uh, here we go. Let's see if any of them decide to disconnect or something. Here goes nothing. Well, that did nothing, so that was a complete failure. So it is now time to, you know, try it on myself. Now, just a heads up, I like to consider myself having a good pain tolerance, especially with stuff like this, but it's been a while, and the only thing I'm concerned about is me launching this PSP somewhere where it shouldn't go, especially there. So let's see how that goes. Maybe I'll clear my desk real quick. And uh, yeah, here we go. Oh boy. Yep, yep, uh, I felt it. It's like someone stabbed you and then you instantly healed. Maybe that's how Deadpool feels every time he gets uh, cut in half. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I felt that. So, I mean, I'll, I'll try it somewhere else. I mean, I heard that if you go ahead and do it on your forearm, it will feel like you hit your funny bone. So let's try that out. All right, here we go. Three, two. Yikes. Yeah, that, uh, that's a, that's a feeling. <laughs> Now the question is, can I actually hold it for more than a split second? Okay. Yep. Okay, we're done here. So yeah, that was quite the shock. It does hurt, but of course, as soon as you take your hand away, it stops hurting, but you're left with like, I don't know, like 5% of the total pain that you felt. And then of course it just fades away within, within five minutes. So not too bad. I've actually ran out of ideas to try with this thing. I could try this. Nope, that didn't light up, but a shirt pinched me. This time around, I felt like I got bit by a hamster. I definitely remember how that was. I was at the pet store, and it was a short-haired Russian hamster that just uh, bit me on my finger. And then I dropped him, and then one of the employees had to go run after it. So finally, here's a quick close-up of what it looks like with and without lighting. And now my room smells like ozone and my ears are ringing, just like how it was throughout the entire build, which smells kind of nice, but, but not great for your health. And with that being said, that is all for this video. It's a mod that nobody asked for. Nobody should do this. Everything that you decide to do is at your own risk and you should not do this. It's stupid, it's pointless, but pretty cool. If you guys want to see me try anything else with this PSP while it's still working, let me know. Maybe you have some better ideas than I do. I would love to hear them. If they're good enough, we could perhaps do a short about them. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.